So I've been um, sticking to my homeschool schedule really well, the Ambleside Online dot org it's charlotte mason curriculum completely available online for free i've shared that with you guys before um the schedule is for free and all of the 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 curriculum layout but of course you there's some investment but again like minimal because i've only invested in a reading curriculum <clears throat> a spanish curriculum a math curriculum and I've invested in some of the books some of the literature because it's so great I want to have it in our library but most of it I get at the library or free online so it's really really great um, this is an example of the schedule it's separated into weeks so every week you cross out what you get accomplished as you get accomplished as you accomplish it and then once it's all crossed out all you've got to make sure you're doing is your penmanship, um, foreign language, reading, and math. And so I do those four every morning along with some Bible memorization and some poetry memorization. And then we, I break these up into subjects and just make sure we knock it all out throughout the week. And I share that in more detail in some of my other homeschool videos. But I was thinking today... Um, I've had many conversations in the last few weeks. You you know, it's really fun to talk to other homeschool moms, but it's also very overwhelming because everybody has a different approach and it's good to hear of all the different ideas and thoughts and approaches. In the end, you've got to figure out what works best for you. And of course, you can change things along the way and tweak things along the way and add things and omit things. Of course, all of that's, that, that's the beauty of the freedom of homeschooling, right? But if you're super excited about it, like I am, I want to do everything. I hear about such great books that we haven't read yet, and I want to read them, but we're reading a bunch already, so I can't, you know? So I always have to go back and hang on. You know, it's okay that we're not going to read all of these books. I'm teaching them to read, and in the meantime, I'm reading them these awesome books, and as they learn to read and as they grow up, then they can read those books if they want to. There's just so many great books, so many great books, and um, it's hard, you know? And then with the nature study, there's so many fun activities and experiments and books and information out there, but you just gotta like, wait a minute, I have a six and a seven year old. We can't cover everything there is to know about rocks in the entire world today. We have 13 weeks to cover rocks, minerals, and soils. Calm down, you know? It's just exciting, it's exciting. Knowledge is fun, information and educating yourself is fun. So I get super into it and super excited, and they do too, but I have to remember just to give them a little bit what they can handle and then we'll talk some more next time, you know? And <clears throat> as far as like all of the literature and um, curriculums out there and all of those things, you just have to narrow it down to not overdo it because you can easily go off that end. And then you can also easily go off the other end where you say, this is the only thing I want to see. I already know what I'm doing. Forget everything else. You don't want to do that either because there's probably stuff out there that you might want to switch out for what you've got because it's so great. And um, we want to be open and flexible and, you know, willing to change things up. So two things that women have told me that have like raised homeschool children that I like hold to. I'm like, you know what you're talking about. I'm totally going to believe you and listen to you. Number one is you can't teach them everything. So just teach them the love of knowledge and the love of reading. And then when they want to learn about something, they will go and pursue that knowledge because they love to learn and they know and love to read. So that is, a great truth that it's like yes that I might hang on to that because you can go into this vicious cycle of I want to do everything I want to do everything and then the other I'm not doing enough am I doing enough am I doing enough yes you're doing enough you're doing enough and I have to tell myself that too we get into that question the scary question so that's one thing and then the other thing another mom told me it's a lot less deep and profound but it's just true so it's like God gave me my children and equipped me to teach my children. 
thank you. <laughs> you know, like I totally believe that. No one knows my children better than I do and no one knows how to teach them better than I do. And I think that is safe to say for every mama um, out there. So, so cute. <laughs> so, for all of you homeschool moms that struggle in the same ways, because we all do, you're not alone, you're doing enough, just have fun, teach them the love of learning. Don't ever make, hey, this is a real video, calm, calm down. Um, teach them the love of learning, and I feel like the way that I do that, Hey, Joelle. Joelle, right now is not a good time because I'm filming the video, okay? Don't hit the drum again. So, the way that I feel like I've succeeded, I have a six and a seven year old. We'll see how things continue to progress. But I really do thank the Lord for his grace in this area. He has helped me truly um, be very excited about the things we're learning and um, truly enjoy and love the things we're reading. And so when they see that this is fun, it's not like uh, school, they totally buy into that and they love it too and they have fun too and they can't wait. So I think being genuinely interested in what you're teaching your children um, is a great help in teaching them the love of knowledge. And looking at what's out there might be really important for that reason because you don't want to be forcing yourself to do something um, that doesn't mesh well with your family um, as far as what curriculum you're using and what education you're what literature you're reading and stuff like that. If you don't like it, then find something else that you do like. Um, there's been a few things that I haven't liked in the Charlotte Mason curriculum that I've been like, ah, oh, we're not reading this anymore. Hey, Joelle, Joelle, yeah. please stop, buddy. It's too loud. Please respond, sweetheart. Thank you. So, um, have fun. And then um, not be overbearing and forceful and pushy it is so easy to get impatient and frustrated and annoyed when something doesn't click in their mind and you're like hello we have we've been doing this for days how do you not know how are they going to be encouraged and love learning if that's how we act right and I've totally done it I have fallen down that path before um, also um, trying to push you know like I have friends or not friends acquaintances that have told me that their five-year-olds have cried during math what like that in my opinion should never ever 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 happen ever we don't we cannot force the rate of their development um We can't force the rate of their development, right? Like they're going to develop at the rate that they're going to develop. And so let's take that and just pour into it lovingly, patiently, and have fun. And they're going to learn. Um, they will learn. They will. Uh, just be consistent and have fun and show them the love that and the joy that comes with learning and use various tools you know um, we use a lot of books because we love reading and the Charlotte Mason is very rich in literature so we do a lot a lot of books but we're also outside exploring a lot um, with our nature studies which I love we do a lot of bird watching um, insect hunting we've had many pets we've had a praying mantis um, we have three cocoons right now we've had um, an ant farm and a tadpole world like we went and got frog eggs so there's a lot of fun things that you can do um, we've also do YouTube videos you know not a lot but when we do it's fun and exciting um, and crafts of course painting all of those things so use tools you don't have to be super creative I am not I am not super creative I am actually very uncreative and um, it's a weak point and that's why I love homeschool co-op because we do fun crafts there we don't do many crafts at home and it's just because I'm not it's not a strong point I would much rather sit and talk and read than um, 
pull out the paint and the scissors and the glue and everything. I'm just not good at it. And then when I do make a craft, it's like the most simple thing on the planet because I'm so not creative. But thank you, Pinterest, for simple, easy, cheap craft ideas. Yay. So anyway, I hope this is encouraging in some way or another to other homeschool moms. I am still very new to this, so I am sure there are so many other moms that can give so much more wisdom than I can in this area. But with my very, very, very short two years in doing this, not even two years, year and a little bit, um, I know the thought wars that you have, like, am I doing enough, am I doing enough? And I cling to that truth of just teach them the love of learning, just teach them the love of reading, you don't have to teach them everything. They'll go learn it on their own later. Um, so, yeah. Have a great day, everybody.